Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of Acer P Bonsai. I'm here with my super stout Kiyohime Japanese maple, and as you can see, it is just starting to push buds. This is one of the most beautiful parts of springtime. All of these tiny little sets of leaves starting to unfurl. Now, when we're working with a variety like Kiyohime, it's important that we manage our buds. That's right, you can have almost too many, so it's really important that we make sure that we're appropriately thinning these out so that we don't get any congestion. Why do you gotta do that? Well, here's a great example. Because of the naturally dense habit of this cultivar, you can get these areas because a bunch of buds all formed at the same node and we're allowed to extend for a long period of time. So when we usually cover that bonsai rule of always one to two, meaning you have a one branch, it always branches into two, never three. So with one, two, three, four, five branches all coming from the same node, that's an extreme amount of congestion. We're gonna have to work that out. Now, as I spin the tree around, you're gonna see that it already did a bunch of reduction on the branching. I got this tree last winter, meaning one whole winter ago, and I worked on it uh, last year during this growing season of 2023. You can see I chopped back a major branch here, three branches here, a really large branch came off here. Here's another one where a branch came off. This branch came off and all these, there was a large amount of branches all the way out to here and I had to reduce it way back. So although I was fairly aggressive, I probably could have been more aggressive. In most of these areas where I cut back, let me see if I can find a good example. You can see that I chopped this large branch and it's healing almost flat right over it. Now that is like an aggressive heal. But if you look closely on this back side, you can see that the branch died back almost half an inch. So had I not left this, it could have potentially caused some dieback issues. I wanted to make this chop last year and allow it a full year so that I made sure this was fully compartmentalized down here on this node line. There's a few other areas like that on the tree. You can see here, I've chopped these way back and I've already got some pretty good branch development. This entire extension here is coming off. I had this large branch that I removed last winter before spring. This branch I removed the end of last year, and now it's gonna be time to cut that branch completely off. I still don't think it's quite ready to come all the way back. I'm worried about it dying back. So I'm gonna cut this back to about here. We're transitioning this to these two branches that are now in development. Around this side of the tree, I still haven't decided whether I'm gonna reduce it all the way back to just this single short trunk line, or if I'm gonna keep both of these. If I keep this back one, you can see it's got some issues. It's got one really long straight section and then a really big inverse tapered area. So at a minimum, I'm gonna to have to chop all of this section back here, and then I'm gonna begin developing this as the, the continuation of that branch. So today we're gonna to chop that back as well. We'll see how it heals and we can decide later. Now that we've got this tree slowed down, there's no real concern of these two competing or causing any additional taper issues. Let's also take a look over here. There was a large branch that I removed. It was just way too big and it was unsightly and had a lot of reverse taper. I wanted to peel this away so you can see the healing. And there you go, it's already started to close. It's really doing well. We're gonna cut away at the edge of that scar so that it can continue healing. I'm gonna zoom in close here. I wanna talk you through my process and my thinking when I'm thinning these buds so that you guys can do the same at home. All right, folks, I wanna draw your attention to this part of the branch right here. As you can see, we have the branch extending from the trunk line here. I've chopped it back here, and now we've got this section, and then it branches here. It's send out one bud right there, that's great. And then at the end of this extension, it's got one, two buds. We do need to clean up this dead tip here all the way back. Moving over to this branch, you can see there's a profusion of growth in this area here. This bottom branch looks great. It's got one, two buds. This top one, however, has one, two, three buds. That violates our one to two rule. We need to reduce this down to two. There's gonna be a lot of growth over in this side. So with this, what I'm gonna to choose to do is remove this interior bud. I mean interior to the branch line right here. I'm gonna allow it to grow upwards and outward. The other thing I did when given the opportunity is I did not remove the center bud. I chose one of the side buds. That will create a smaller angle between the two buds. If I had removed the center, it would have had a wider angle, which gives you somewhat of that slingshot shape that we don't like. The narrower angle is gonna look a lot more natural. And moving over here, you can see the same thing happening. You can see one, 
two on the lower bud, and then the upper bud has three. So what I'm going to do again is I'm going to remove that bud right there. There's one, two, three buds here. I'm going to sacrifice the small angle to reduce the amount of crowding that's going on. I'm going to remove the central bud there and allow it to grow up and down. And then we've got this bud over here. It's already exploded with growth. On the back side, there are a few little buds here. There's one down on the bottom, there's the big central one, and there's one on the top. I plucked out that central bud on the left-hand side, so it's going to go down and up. Now what I want to do is I want to change it up. So I'm going to remove this lower bud. The central bud's going to grow, and this top one will be promoted to grow. I imagine that'll come out in a week or two. All right, moving down a little bit, we still have more of the same. It's harder to see here, but there's some small buds that are starting to form. And if I bend this branch over to the side, you can actually see there's one little tiny node there, and then there's another inner node here. So one inner node, so it's node, node, node. So there's actually a profusion of branching right in this one spot. I'm going to remove this bottom bud right there. This other bottom bud. And if I can, I'm going to reach in here. I don't know if I can do it without damaging that bud. But there's this little tiny one under there. I want to get that out. There we go. Can you guys see that? So we really have to be careful to manage these small guys, especially when we have this really tight branching. Now this is kind of my fault because last year I did a defoliation on the tree and it caused a really short segment of growth. But that was kind of neat. I wanted to have control over it. I wanted to test out what the tree would do. But this year we don't need to have that much fine branching. We're going to clean up all these little buds that we don't need. We already have so many branches in this area. Now this here, when we talk about mindfulness, this is one of my favorite activities because it's really calming to just go through here and gently clean up these branches. All right, taking a look at this one, we've again got the one, two, three. I'm going to remove this bottom growing bud in favor of these two. And then on the inside, I'm gonna remove that inner bud. And that way we can allow the branching to go like that. And there's some little ones in here too. Again, that really fine budding. We don't wanna deal with that later. Okay, I got that one off there. There's a really tiny bud right there we're gonna allow. And there's a nice branch to those. That's great, that's beautiful. There's a little bud at the base of this branch. I'm going to get rid of that because this is already a really short inner node. This bud is really nice. We're going to leave that. All right, moving around. I think I've already cleaned up all of these ones. Nope, here we go. This is another one with some triplets. So let's... That's really crazy. I'm going to remove that bottom growing branch there. And that bottom growing branch there. There we go. This one looks good. We've got two lateral buds. This one has some little buds. These little sneakers that are at the base. And this is one of those things that you're going to see. You're not going to see it in every species, but in the cultivars like Kiyohime, you definitely see it. They have, they you know, if you let them grow wildly, that's why they get so bushy, is because they actually produce more buds at each node than a typical maple. So we're going to remove that bottom growing bud. We're going to do, you know what, this is interesting. We're kind of creating some contorted movement. So think of this as a downward growing bud, or you can also think of it as an up-down movement in the future branch that will be there. So I'm actually going to remove that top growing bud. So we're going to create more movement by allowing it to grow downward. And then there's also this bud back here that's going to fill that space. Not only are we working on the angle and we're trying to clear up spacing, but we want it to look natural. Let's remove that bud. So there's all these tiny little buds inside these crotches. We've got to get rid of those. All right, so this is a really interesting branch. And the reason being, you know, we generally are trying to go from one to two, and we let this split, but then we let it extend one two, three, four nodes long. 
So you might ask, shouldn't we be cutting that all the way back and allowing it to split? Well, the answer is no. We want to have some irregularity. If it's always just one to two, that's not going to look as natural. If you look at the Fibonacci sequence and how it expresses itself in nature, you'll start to see that pattern that goes one to one to two to three to five to eight to 13. And so although it's kind of a random thing, what that really means when you're thinking artistically about the design is that you don't always want to have one to two. If it was, if it was just a, a doubling, it would be one to two to four to eight. But you'll notice in the Fibonacci sequence, it's kind of a slower progression that matches the natural number. So we want to make sure that we're irregular. So it's actually good to have sometimes uneven lengths of branches. So if we go one to two, let's think about that. One to two, and then the next one would be to three. So so let's remove that bottom growing bud. We don't need that. It's too close, although it was technically a good point of ramification. These, these buds are so close together, that bottom bud was really just gonna congest this. For these other branches, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick one or the other. So we're gonna go one to two. So we're counting the trunk line and then this, the bud as a second branch. This would be three, so let's remove that. We're removing this bud because it's too close and we wanna open up growth for this little guy down here. So we got one going laterally there to the left. Then we're gonna have one that goes up. We'll remove this bottom growing branch. And then we get out to the end and then it has a split. So there we go, that's perfect. Taking a look back here, we have more of those pesky little buds. This is a little bit more elongated than that, but it's still pretty, pretty short. It's about as wide as my fingernail, maybe slightly longer. And this is gonna end up being a lot larger in the future. So let's just take that off for now. This is just crazy here, there's like four buds all on top of each other. Now technically there's only two and two because there's a very short internode right there. But either way you count it, it's not gonna work. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop off that bottom bud and I'm going to actually remove that bud there on the inside. Because remember, we don't wanna be going toward the inside of the tree. If we push in this way, we're going the wrong direction. We need to come outward toward the viewer. So we're gonna allow these branches to go that way and then we'll, we'll force them this way. There's another one here we wanna deal with. I'm gonna take away this interior bud. There we go. And then there's more of these little pesky ones, these little sneakeroos. Gotta get those out of there. And there's more on the top. There we go. Same down here. I bet you guys already saw these. Oh, this is so much fun. And the great part about this is reducing these buds is gonna do two things. It's gonna stop the tree from getting inverse taper. And two, it's gonna encourage the energy to go to these buds we have. So we're gonna get a nice vigorous growth right where we want it. There's another little bud right there I need to get rid of. Bye, get out of here. All right, let's take a look around. How are we doing? All right. All right, folks, it's time for us to attack this knob. There is a node line right here where these branches are coming out along that node line. There was one large branch this way that was removed. Leave enough tissue that we don't lose this branch. This was such a long, grotesque branch and the inverse taper was ridiculous on this thing. It's okay if this branch doesn't live. I'll be satisfied coming back to this one. I'd rather make that big decision now and possibly save the branch or more quickly come to the decision that I need to regrow a branch from scratch. I'm okay with that too. I think we can trust that live vein on the bottom. We'll see what happens. These buds look pretty vigorous. Come in here with our secret weapon. It's our razor blade. Razor blade makes a pretty good saw actually. This can heal. We just need to be really careful with it. Ooh. 
Oof, this is extreme. And you know what? If this branch dies, I will admit it. I'm not going to hide it from you guys. We're going to do this together. And we're going to learn from it. So I'm comfortable with that. Taking it down about as far as I can stand. And we've actually got a nice taper introduced there. We can probably come down a little bit more off the top, but I'll tell you what, if this whole thing heals, I'm comfortable coming back in and reducing this again and having to reheal it. But we've really reduced that bump, and I think it's going to transition nicely. If this closes up, we're going to be set. All right, so let's get the cut putty on that. All right, beautiful. So we're literally sculpting branches here. Let's take a look over here. Now this one, we already did this last time. Once it heals, we'll come back in and mess with it some more. We've already done all this damage here. Let's leave this puppy alone on this side. You know, we can do a little bit of whittling over here. I'm okay with it having a little bit of irregularity to it. But that real sharp point coming out, that's just a no-go right there. Just trying to smooth that all down. There we go. Can you guys see that okay? There we go. All right, what is next? This mama here. See this branch comes out here and it doesn't have a solid node line. So I'm gonna chop this tip off. All right, here goes, Are you ready? Left a little bit of length there, so we can die back. We're just gonna cover that up with a piece of cut putty and allow that to finish the die back process. We have some more work to do back here. You can see we tore back into that tissue a little bit. That's okay, we actually have a lot. This branch has got so much inverse taper on it. We really do need to bring it down a little bit. We had a small break in filming since then the Buds have started to open. Bring this back a little bit. Inverse taper on this particular tree was really horrible when I first got it. So I had to do some major branch reduction. But you know, that's that's the process. That's what had to be done to get this trunk girth here. When you get a tree really heavily fertilized like that, it's gonna cause that extreme knuckling. Every time you do a major chop like that, the tree's gonna react. It's not until you slow the tree down, you can start working on that delicate contour. We're taking a lot of tissue up here, but this is gonna be necessary if we wanna even out this branch. It's okay if there's a little bump. We'll leave that backside. I don't want to disturb the vein on the back of this branch because this is where all that energy is flowing from. Sculpting these branches in this extreme way, it could end up in failure if the die if the branch dies back. And then really we're, we're not really left in a different position because the other option was to cut the whole branch off and start growing it from scratch. So, I mean, potentially we could get a little bit further along if we had just cut this back last year, obviously not knowing we'd fail. But I'd say it's worth a try to see if we can shape this branch into a usable form rather than assuming failure from the, from the get-go. My mom always liked that tortoise and hare analogy. Slow and steady wins the race. A little more gentle, taking a little bit at a time. It may end up being more productive in the long run. We may end up in the future needing to bring this down a little bit more, but we have to heal this over first and then we can come back and address this lump on the top. So let's get that immediately covered back up. We don't want to have any infection set in. We'll be watching this closely. and We're going to allow this branch to extend. I'm really happy with that. It's pretty good progress. And there is a node line here, so I'm pretty confident this is going to stop. That'll make a nice transition. We can get back in here and rework that as well, maybe next year. We've got some pretty good branch growth here. Now eventually this may come off or we may only keep the forward bending branch. But for now, while we're working on healing this large wound, we're just gonna let this grow freely. It's not gonna do any harm down here. All right, what's next? Let's readdress this wound here. Let's see how this one's doing. Okay. So we've definitely started to Heal over right there. We've definitely established our live vein. So that's a great start on this branch. With some dye back. That's why we do this in stages. We give this branch every opportunity to heal over. Okay, and this branch is gonna thicken. This isn't perfect up here, but after we heal this, we may come back in here either this summer or next year 
and try to address this knuckling here. It's been a work in progress over the last year or so. I think we can hit that a little bit and kind of reopen that and see if we can encourage that to finish the closing. <laughs> Hopefully that encourages that to continue callousing there. Maybe we can get that to heal a little bit quicker there. We've got this one here, and I gotta be honest, I'm not brave enough to cut this back yet. We already saw this die back. We're gonna give that a little more time. I can already see a collar forming. It's really faint. If you look closely here, you can see a swelling right here in this tissue. And this is not on a node line, but it does seem to be the natural stopping point. And we'll probably address this in June with this bump here. This is never gonna turn into anything good. We need to cut that off. See if we can get in here with our knob cutters and remove that without damaging that newly opening bud there. Major chop here is doing great, but we do want to open up that edge again. It's not all showing on camera, but we've got an edge opened all the way around. That's going to encourage continued rolling. That's formed a nice collar there. That's a nice concave chop. It's really big on camera. Funny how those angles work. That's going to heal nicely. Well, let's get in there with the drum up. Right, we're going to leave a little knuckle on that one. Let that finish dying back. You know, we may end up reducing this off completely and cutting this entire corner off over to this back branch here. It is definitely very unsightly, but we don't want to make that decision quite yet. I would like to give this branch a chance. I'm going to wire it down into position over here. Oh yeah, that's doing nice. That one there and this one. We made these chops last year when I first got this tree. As you can see, these have started healing pretty nicely. This bottom edge is going to be fine as is. This top edge, we're going to have to we're going to have to take that down again. But first, we want to allow this to heal over. I want to get in there and try to shape that a little bit. come back behind ourselves with a razor blade just in case that edge got burned by our grinding tool we're gonna set this up to we did take a little bit more of that woody tissue out of the center of the branch there and that'll allow us to heal this into a better shape get all that tissue out of there. I want to give it a nice solid foundation to callus over on. There we go. We're in a really good position. And then probably this will heal over this year. Next year we can come back and address this lump on the top. Alright, let's take a look over here at this other guy. This one's looking pretty good too. And it's healing along pretty nicely. There's a lot more of this tissue on the top edge that's gonna to need to be reduced. And this is growing pr 
nice and strong over here. I think we can do some of that work now. I'm not going to get too crazy with it, but let's see if we can get a little bit closer to that more refined profile we're looking for. Get in there with our razor blade. Definitely having a little bit of unusual growth here. This is normal. It's normal for this to have that kind of unusual growth in the area. The tree is, you know, the tree doesn't think. All it's doing is it's got this, it's almost like a water pump pushing, pushing energy out to the tips of the branches. And it's going to, always push that energy in the most efficient way so it finds the best path and that's why sometimes you'll get this interesting curling and knuckling as it continues to grow more quickly in the more open areas with less scarring and congestion so that's where we come back in and we can make these refinements and encourage that tree to heal and grow in the direction that we want it to. Let's get a little of that top edge off of there. There we go. This is going to be nice. I don't see any major issues here. All right. We've got that pretty smoothed out there. We can always come in here and address it again in the future. We do want to reopen. edge of this rolling callus here. So let's get that right there. There we go. See that? So you can see the lime green showing. That's the cambium. And you can so if you see the lime green, that's the cambium. And then under the under that is the first year wood or the xylem. That's going to help that to make sure these are touching there. Okay, good. That's going to allow that to start that healing process up again promptly right now in the spring. That's going to be a nice little twisted branch here in the future. So this is a lot of work, but the contorted shapes we're getting here is great. You can see here I did get a little bit of wire bite. That's my bane, of course. But I'd say one branch with a little bit of wire bite across this entire tree is not too bad. This was one of the most vigorous growing branches last year. And I think we'll be able to get that to smooth out over time. A little bit of marks here and here as well. But that's not real extreme. That should heal out within a year or two. This trio right here, this is never going to work. And then on the inside here, that's too many buds. Likewise, down here, we can't have all this clustering. Let's get rid of that back here. Extra buds. Don't need those. Since we're still healing these wounds here, I'm going to let this grow. It's not really blocking any other branches. We can always remove that later, and it's going to help thicken this other branch up. This bud on this inside bend out of there. All right, so here we are. Let's do a quick spin around on our sumo style kiyohime. We've continued the progression of working back some of these major wounds, working on these inverse taper issues throughout the tree here. One more time, let's look. Here's one from last year. We did a major chop. There was a big branch coming out this way. So we're gonna let that fully heal. So this is an example of how we kind of can do some of the work and then we have to do it in stages. Again, we're gonna wait here. This is just a massive inverse taper. We're gonna have to completely carve this entire branch to get that down. So we may come at that again in midsummer, see how it's doing. There's a lot to be done on this tree, but really when you buy a high quality pre-bonsai stock, what you're basically buying is 
just a trunk and maybe a nabari. Um, if you're lucky, a few primary branches. And so, although there's a lot of issues on this tree that need to be worked on, I'm excited to develop it over time. I'm also even thinking about doing some extreme reductions on this tree. I'd be happy to hear in the comment section what y'all think. Um, based on the root situation, I've got this buried and I'm gonna let it grow for another season. This root down here, if you can see, I chopped it off completely. And I believe this tree is going to actually sit better at a slight angle about like that, if I remember. But I wanted to get some development on that Nabari after the major root reduction I did after I bought this tree last year. So for now, we're going to let it grow in this container another year and continue to develop this primary branching. Um, I want to also address the fact that I did some major reductions and I controlled the branch growth uh, quite a bit last year. Some might say, well, hey, that's not what you're supposed to do. This tree is in development. You need to let it, uh, you need to let it grow freely all year. Uh, now, although I understand the principle of that, I, I get that right. Free running growth is going to allow these wounds to heal much quicker. But what I wanted to do was set us up with some really dense ramification close in on the tree. So this year, I'm going to actually let the tree run a little bit farther and faster than I did last year. Now that I've got some of that primary branching built in close to the interior of the tree. Then I'm going to allow it to grow and then I'm going to cut it back. We're going to start um, capitalizing on the cutback method. So I'm going to allow it to grow wider than I need to. I'm going to trim it back midsummer and allow that second flush of growth to continue that momentum forward. Uh, I'm really excited with the progress I've already made in the last 12 months on this tree. Um, as you can see, Branches like this are completely new. So this was just a small bud a few years ago. So we've got, we've got really like, you know, a lot of good progress. We've already got a branch here. So let's count our ramifications. So if this is a primary branch, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, and then we even have more branching at the end of that. So pretty amazing. Let's also t uh, think about the topic of pinching. So because we are in early development, this would be an example. If you can look here, you can see that there's one pair of leaves open and then there's this interior pair here. We've actually let this go farther than we should if we were going to pinch. You'd pinch out this center node here, allowing only two leaves at each extension. But because we're trying to develop this tree, we're gonna allow that to run. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna allow this to extend for two, three, maybe up to four internodes on each branch. And then I am gonna stop them. Rather than let them run free completely, I'm gonna allow them to run partially free but I'm going to stop that growth to help manage the overall balance of the tree. Then midsummer, we're going to do a defoliation and we're going to drive additional ramification on this tree. This tree was raised for bonsai. So it was grafted in a bonsai nursery and grown strong and fast to create this thick base and this really chunky uh, trunk lines. In our next episode, we'll take a look at my naturalistic Kiyohime that I've been developing from nursery stock. Thanks for joining me. Please like, subscribe, and follow. Um, hit me up in the comment section if you have any questions or have any recommendations or just want to share what you've got going on in your garden. I'd love to hear about your maples that you're growing in your bonsai garden. So thanks a lot and have a great day.